Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome to Northgard. Welcome back, I guess I should say. This is the beginning of a new series, but I have played this game on the channel before. Um, it looks like the last time I did that was approximately three years ago. Uh, and at that time, the game was already pretty huge. There was a lot of stuff in it. Um, at this point, they've been continuously updating it that whole time. Uh, and now there are so many clans and so many game modes. I don't know anything about Conquest. They have added all of these like unit skins that can be earned through in-game achievements and stuff. And listen, there's a lot here. And I'm actually really interested in checking it all out. But a lot of you are probably not aware of what Northgard is. Like I said, it's kind of an older game. Um, and it is about to have a free weekend on Steam. In fact, already the sale has started. You can go and purchase this video game for seven and a half dollars. And I think that's a pretty good deal. I like this game quite a bit. And like I said, there's a lot here. Um, and it's probably really fun in multiplayer. I've never actually played it with another human being, but... So, rather than me trying to tell you this is all the cool stuff, I think what we should do here is we're gonna explore all, the, all of this stuff over the next couple of days. But for right now, let's just play a normal game of Northgard so you can see what the thing is, yeah? Uh, now, there are a lot of clans that you can play as, and I know that the Clan of the Rat is a thing that exists now, and you all know how I feel about stuff like this. However, the Clan of the Rat's complicated, and I'm not sure I want to try to come to grips with this and also explain it all while I'm also explaining the game and uh, remembering how to play it. So why don't, we why don't we play one of the early clans, one of the clans that was in at the beginning of the game, uh, one that's like very straightforward, so you can see how Northgard works. And then we'll try out some of the fancy clans, because a lot of the clans have really cool and intricate mechanics, particularly the clans that have been released more recently. Um, also, you know, fun animal mascots? Mascots probably not a good fun animal idols. Anyway, we're going to play as the clan of the goat, is my point. Uh, so every clan has uh, some special features, some, some unique stuff, of course. Uh, this clan's thing is sheep. Anybody can find sheep on the map, but the clan of the goat starts with a sheep and can build special buildings that enhance the function of sheep. What does that mean? You'll see in a moment here. Uh, we're just going to leave it on... Here, we're going to be orange. We're going to leave it on normal. All of the victory conditions enabled. The map size that... I don't know. The one that's already selected. Let's go. So what is Northgard? Northgard is a real-time strategy game, but it's a real-time strategy game that does some really unusual things. I think in a sense, it feels a lot like a sort of a blending of real-time strategy and a 4X. And those two genres have a lot in common already. You'll see what I mean in a moment here though. So when we start, we're going to have control of one tile of land. Uh, let me just go ahead and pause the game here for a second. So this is a tile. The map is made up of different tiles, and each tile has room in it for certain things to happen. Um, if I... I can't do any selection or anything while we're paused. Um, well, you know, the game's on normal. Hopefully it won't be too brutal if I'm just doing things slowly while I'm explaining. Uh, so we start with a handful of villagers. We start with our sheep because of our clan. Uh, and we start with a handful of resources here. You can see we're gathering stuff over time. Villagers, left to their own devices, will just gather food. And they do so pretty poorly. You can get specialized food gatherers. Uh, but before you do any of that, you're going to need some scouts. Let's expend a little bit of wood building one of these. So, uh, any villager in a region with a building that needs to go up will just start working on it. We don't give direct orders uh, to most of our units most of the time. You can change what a unit's job is. For example, if you have a training building, just throw a unit in there and have them become something else. Uh, now that Brynhild here is a scout, she can explore adjacent tiles. We can't move into new tiles or, um, or use them for anything until they have been explored, and a scout is the only way to do that, with all of the clans that I'm familiar with at least. Who knows what else there might be. Uh, so you can see here our town hall is going to periodically produce another villager. Uh, ooh, okay. We found a tile that has stag and a uh, stone on it. I actually like this quite a bit. We're going to go ahead and take this. So a neutral value tile 
uh, can be colonized at a cost of food. Only one player can own a tile at a time. So obviously, you know, we have our, our clan's border here. And Brynhild will just continue to explore uh, without me having to give her orders. But I can give her specific directions if I want. Ooh, wow, a tile that has a ton of sheep. Okay, that's very exciting. What we're going to build first is a, is a hunter's lodge. This will allow a couple of people to be assigned to hunt on this tile, which is a job that gathers food more efficiently than a uh, villager, especially during the winter. Uh, the cycle of summer and winter is a big, big part of this game, and villagers gathering food suffer badly during the winter. They do not do the thing the way you would hope. Uh, so, let me pause here and just mouse over some UI elements. So up here you can see these are all of our military units. Currently we have none, but these are the types that we can have. Uh, and here are the different types of civilians. There's woodcutters and farmers and hunters and fishermen. We don't need to like go over them all right now, but this is a nice quick selection bar. Um, down here we have a button that allows us to organize a feast. We can just burn a large stockpile of food to get a bonus to a lot of our production. Um, it is... Super good, super valuable to do. However, you have to keep in mind a couple of things. First of all, each subsequent feast costs more than the last one did. And secondly, when winter comes, and you can see the, uh, the time meter over here, the seasons passing. Uh, when winter comes, our food income is going to take a very significant hit. And we got to make sure we don't start starving because uh, uh, people die. That's what starvation is. People get sick and then they die. So, we gotta manage all of this stuff. Uh, you'll notice up here, we have a fair amount of food uh, coming in, but also each villager is consuming food. Right now, the balance is pretty easy because basically everybody that we have is gathering more food than they're eating. But as we start uh, assigning people to other things like wood cutting and whatnot, this gets a little bit trickier. So you really need people working higher yield food jobs. Uh, we are also spending wood constantly, even when we're not building because people need firewood to stay warm. The need for firewood to stay warm goes up dramatically during winter. It's another big concern. Uh, the town hall is producing crowns right now, and we're paying a little bit of money for each, uh, each building's upkeep. The biggest thing that you use money for is to hire military units. To train a civilian unit into a military unit pretty much always costs crowns. And they're not super easy to get. There are not a lot of sources of them. In addition, we have stone and iron, which are limited resources that we will have to uh, mine out of the map. Food is infinite. Wood is infinite. But like when we select this tile, we can see it has a certain amount of stone. And once we've mined that out, it's gone. <clears throat> so stone and iron are used for much more important upgrades. In addition, we have a population maximum. Right now, we're not getting any more population in because we don't have enough houses for them. Something we'll be fixing presently. Uh, an indication of our warband size, the total number of units here. Our maximum number of military units right now is zero, which is potentially problematic. Uh, here, there's a whole military experience system. As your units um, do combat, you can gain military perks. Clans that engage in more military are better at military. A very sensible system. And over here we have effectively the tech tree. Now this is called lore, not science in this game. So it's got a little bit of a, a little bit of an unusual feel, but essentially this is tech stuff, right? Your woodcutters produce 20 more, 20% 20 more wood. Your military units have more attack power, that kind of stuff. Uh, in addition to like the basic text that everybody has, you can see some of our texts have our clan sim symbol on them. Each clan has a number of unique technologies um, that dovetail with the things they're supposed to be good at. Uh, so we'll worry about this stuff later. Ooh, sheep folds containing sheep make new sheep appear. That's uh, that's new. That was not in place last time I uh, I played the game. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, there's a lot going on. I'm gonna unpause and do my best here. It's not impossible. I will lose this game. Uh, so we should talk about the sheep really quickly. Uh, the sheep obviously cannot do work. We can slaughter a sheep to gain immediately 80 food. Uh, also, having at least one sheep in a zone reduces the need for firewood in that zone because the villagers are able to keep themselves warm with clothes made from the wool, presumably. So it's valuable to have more sheep. Uh, now that this is finished, we should assign some people to it. You can see 
it can hold two clan members. And I think... Uh, I do not remember here. I'm going to just turn that on, display off. I don't remember off the top of my head. I think hunters gather food. Is there a really obvious display of this? Not really. I think hunters gather food a little bit more efficiently than villagers during the uh, the summer. And then hunting suffers no uh, food penalty during the winter. There are also other kinds of food jobs like farming, which are even more efficient during the summer months, but um, take a uh, take a very serious hit during winter. We should probably build some houses, but before we do that, we should probably build a woodcutter's lodge. It would be really bad to run out of wood. Uh, and I think we're okay to go ahead and just build a house here. So we're going to take a little bit of a dive on food because we have these villagers building stuff instead of uh, instead of doing food. And we're pretty close. Uh, <laughs> pretty close to running out of wood. It's fine. This is going to be uh, built up soon enough. Uh, so our scout is continuing to scout. We don't need to micromanage that. We found a tile that has some ruins. Ooh, and a rune stone where we can assign someone to earn lore. We also found a tile over here with iron deposits and even more deer. That actually super rules. Okay. I'm going to need a couple of people to start chopping wood, like, soon. All right. Each tile can support a certain, only a certain number of buildings. For most tiles, it will be three. Your home tile gets a little bit of, a little bit of extra room so that you can, you know, get your early game set up. Uh, so we need to decide what is next. Ah, Droger tombs. You can see we got some some half dead evil creatures that have infested the island. Uh, enemies will spawn from stuff like this. If we can go over there and clear it out and then colonize the zone, we'll get a bunch of fame and also iron. But that's a tall order and obviously it's going to involve military units. What I would love to do is colonize this zone. Uh oh, we got wolves. So any zone that has enemies in it will periodically uh, send enemies out into the surrounding tiles. Uh, you can see your units fight by themselves, and a wolf, a lone wolf, is not really a huge danger. But uh, we definitely need to get some more wood, because I really want to build our first military building. It's where this is going. Uh, your civilian units cannot leave your borders, except for the scout, obviously. Um, but so I can't just, like, send some woodcutters over here to deal with this. You want to do some military expeditions. You got to get a military building. The first military building is 50 wood, and we're going to go ahead and spend. Let's spend a building slot in this region to do that. The reason I don't want to spend the building slot in this region is we only have one space left, and this region has coastline. And I think we're probably going to want to build a dock here once we have the wood. Okay, so that stuff's all going. We're getting new villagers in. So you can see here, happiness. Uh, when we get more people in, they impose a... Uh, each, each new villager who shows up uh, decreases our happiness by one. But increasing our amount of territory increases our happiness. Uh, maybe it's not... Yeah, maybe the happiness loss is not one to one. Uh, there are other things that we can do, obviously, to increase happiness. But happiness is, like, the main downward pressure on population. Your population cannot grow if they are not happy. Okay, so we have a finished building here. It's 30 crowns to train a warrior. Let's train two warriors. This might be overkill, but I want to clear out a couple of tiles. There's only one wolf over here, right? Yeah, a single wolf. If we click on the tile, we get a readout of the units that are in it. So we don't need two warriors to kill a single wolf. But obviously I have greater ambitions. Uh, we are going to go ahead and grab this tile. So there's a little bit of RTS stuff here. You know, you can pull units around to try to change enemy targeting and stuff. Okay, two warriors uh, is not going to be sufficient to clear the Draugr tomb. But I wonder if we might want to... Hmm. I'm debating going going for this tile just to get military experience because we already are yeah, alright, we're gonna go for it 
two warriors kills a wolf pretty fast. I am a little worried that we might not be able to take down everything on this tile. Swap the targets off of you. Yeah, all right, bail. Most things will not leave their um, leave their tile to chase you. Okay, but we did manage to earn some experience. So, access to the watchtower. Oh, we met somebody. Okay, hold on a second. Military camps produce one military experience, reduces the cost of buildings. Your war chief can protect a bodyguard to recruit your war chief. Hmm. Let's take uh, let's take bodyguard. We're gonna we're gonna take a level in leadership. This system is pretty new to me. I've not played with it very much. We also managed a um, a level of lore there. I think I want faster wood generation. It seems good to me. Uh, and we are going to begin the construction of another hunting lodge in this other region over here. So you can see we have three wounded clan members. Anybody who's not at full HP uh, just has 20% reduced production. Obviously, it doesn't affect the military units so much because they are, um, they're not really producing anything. But obviously, they're, they're much less good at fighting while they're horribly wounded. All right. So winter's hit, and we are slightly negative on food. We're actually doing just fine, though. How much is it to take this tile? All right, I'm going to do this. We're going to grab the sheep, and we're going to spread these sheep out over our territory. And I want this for a couple of reasons. But one of the main reasons is I want more places that I can build buildings, because we've just hit our housing limit. I'm going to have the warriors stand on this tile because it is periodically going to get pushed by wolves. Uh, another thing that we're going to have to deal with here is the healing problem. We need healer's huts. That's going to be our next building. So now that we've got all these extra sheep, let's go ahead and run them around. Uh, there's still one sheep on this tile, right? Where is that sheep? I don't actually see it. Theoretically, it's here somewhere. Okay, we're pulling that in as quickly as we can. Yeah, you just gather food. I'm actually going to have a couple of villagers move to this tile to gather food. This is a little heartless, but I want them to be here when enemies arrive so that they can take the hits while the warriors do the killing until we can get our healers established. Uh, also... Do I have... I guess I should I should probably assign a couple of villagers to the hunter's hut that we finished. Oh, no, never mind. Stay put. That's right. The person who built the building could assign up here. Okay, that'll help somewhat with our food issue. And I mean, it's not even really an issue. And in fact, we're doing so well that I think we could overcome... We can just overcome the food loss by throwing a feast and then also, you know, get a lot else... A lot of other stuff out of that. All right, good news. We have enough wood for the healer's hut. Okay, I think we're sort of basically established. So over here we met a neutral faction, the Dwarven Grotto. Uh, we could attack the dwarves and theoretically uh, gain something by defeating them, but we would also lose fame. We haven't really talked about fame yet. You can see it up here in the corner. Uh, is there a way to see... Where's my clan screen? Oh, rivalries. Okay, that's a new mechanic as well. Uh, somewhere around here we have the... the information about our clan and what, what fame does for us. But basically, fame is different for each clan. Uh, I could use a couple more villagers. Alright. So we're going to have two villagers become healers. They will heal up the units that are... Hanging out over here. Uh, our scout took damage. Can we jump over there? Okay, it looks like it wasn't very much. Uh, that will happen while they are just sort of randomly uh, exploring. Okay, we don't have to stress too much about this because the healers will just put the put people back together. We can just kind of let them do their thing for the moment. Uh, and we have enough. Wow. Okay, everybody's doing everything. Also, we met the Mirkal farm. Uh, dark elves? Mur murky, right? I think these are dark elves. 
Uh, an aggressive and cunning native faction. Don't trust them. Don't let them enter your territory. They're going to steal your shit. Cool. Great. Uh, we would, in fact, gain a reward from the other factions for going to war with them, which we might do. Uh, but my primary concern right now with these dwarves actually is making friends, which is something we can do by establishing trade routes. Oh, a great mist has descended. You can see there are some weather systems. There are sometimes events that will occur on the calendar. We'll just keep an eye out for that stuff. Uh, for the moment, though, my next thought is it sure would be nice to have a longship dock. Obviously, you can only build longship docks in places where uh, there is a coast, in tiles that have coastline. Uh, this tile has another sheep. It also has a ruin. You can only uh, search ruins with scouts, and you can only search ruins in tiles that you own. So we could grab that tile and take the reward. I think I'm going to. Also, you know, another sheep. Now, this does give us a tile that is adjacent to this, um, this drugger tile, but there's actually a pretty small number of zombies up right now, so I think it might be to our, uh, to our benefit to just try to wipe them out uh, as soon as possible. Okay, healers will heal uh, units that are outside of their own tile, but they prioritize units that are in their own tile. So tool improvements are, oh, wow. Cost no crowns or iron? We're taking spare tools, and then we're going to talk about tool improvements, because apparently we have the ability to do that now. Uh, okay, so let me, let me, how is that done? Where's the tool screen? Oh, you know what? I think I have to build a blacksmith first, right? Is that correct? Uh, we can mine stuff. Oh, there's way more stuff you can mine. This game, this game has expanded. Let's build a forge. We're gonna build a forge over here. We're also going to, we're still positive on food. Yeah. We're gonna pull a villager over here to become a lore master. Uh, I guess the first thing we should probably do is clear this tile of the wolves so that we have one fewer tile that's spawning garbage at us. All right, the lore master is generating us an extra three lore uh, per tick, so obviously that's pretty good. Uh, generally speaking, your healers will prioritize your military units, which is almost always the thing you want them to be doing. Let's try to clear this out. Now, Draugr are much better fighters than wolves. So it's probably not a huge surprise. I'm a little reluctant to pull people off of... Well, we're about to get a new villager. All right, go and become a blacksmith. Warriors are healed up. Let's jump one of these guys and see if we can take it out quickly before the others arrive. Oof, they are much better fighters, but they won't heal naturally, and we will. Well, I mean, we don't heal naturally, but we have healers. All right, kill one of them and retreat. All right, our scouts found a million crowns. That rules. Okay, so here in the forge, we can... Upgrade the tools of our workers, our different worker classes, to improve their function. Uh, obviously, we just took a tech that lets us improve some of them for free. Let's do that. Uh, generally, it will take metal to do. You will, we'll need iron. And that's, you know, we have, we have an iron deposit. We just need to actually mine it out. It's only 15 iron, though. It's really not much to work with. All right, healers are doing their best. It's going to be a minute, and then we're going to have to have enough food for the colonization to clear the area. And we can see there's more neutral territory out here as well. Oh. Merc elves are launching an assault. Let's get our warriors into that tile. Ooh, the healers are not, not awesome fighters, as you might expect. There we go. Let's watch the HP loss, pull people back. Okay. We're gaining lots of, uh, gaining lots of military experience. So, healing uh, units heal faster, or upgraded buildings produce, uh, producing food and happiness can be assigned an additional villager. So we'd be able to put a third hunter into each of our hunting buildings. For the moment, I'm going to take this. We may come back and get industrious, though. That seems very good for our situation. So the faction over here that we've just met is the Kobolds. And actually, this is, I thought this was one uh, minor faction with two territories, but there's actually a border. 
Where's my scout right now? Um, prioritize. Oh, I can't. I can't explore this tile because it's a player uh, area. So it appears gray, but I think that's just because we haven't met the player yet. Uh, and you do need an upgraded scouting camp to scout other players' territory. I'm not so worried about that right now. This is going to be rough because we're going to have both of them on us the whole time. I would really love to get a kill. Okay, flee! Alright, we'll prod them down and then we need to make sure we uh, colonize this immediately so the other player doesn't do it. Okay. Uh, you can be forging upgrades. We don't have any farmers or fishers right now, but we should still build the tools while they're free. Also, we do have access to a fishing pool, potentially. I Obviously, I'm prioritizing colonization of this uh, area, but once we have this, we can fall back and grab that. And it looks like there's rocky border to the north and the dwarves on the northeast, so it would be very difficult for another player to take this from us. Okay. Another thing we should be thinking about is a war chief. Since we found a ton of money in that um, in that ruin, I actually think let's go ahead and build a mine. We'll get some iron. This can sometimes it can be a challenge to hire a war chief early because you really need a ton of money to do it. But the fact that we pulled uh, we pulled so much out of the ruin is going to be really helpful. Once we have a war chief, we will be a uh, a force to be reckoned with. How wounded is that scout at this point? Uh, it could be worse. I'm going to let him keep going. All right, military units are ready to rock. So we haven't talked at all about, like, actually winning the game. We'll get there. Uh, we have a ton of money. It would be 150 to feast and 160 to hit this. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and organize a feast. Fall back into our territory. Or, sorry, this is this is my territory. What am I talking about? I live here. The Draugr thing contains iron, so actually we'll use this iron to get our war chief. And we hit 200 fame, so we get our first reward. Two free sheep, and we can build more sheep folds. You know what we haven't done is any sheep folding. Uh, also, a ton of stuff just happened there. I think everybody else got Thane at the same time. Oh, what is that? An ancient graveyard. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Uh, okay, sorry, I'm, I'm distracted because things are happening. We're getting a lot of notifications and I don't have time to pay attention to them. All right, build me some farmer tools even though we don't immediately need them. Hearthstone reduces extra firewood consumption. This reduces the amount of happiness that we need. I think I'm going to grab Industrious first. And we're getting pretty close to our happiness cap. We also need to build houses. Uh, I'm not playing very well, in part because I'm uh, paying attention to a lot of things and also commentary and whatnot. Oh, tremors! So we can see at the end of uh, at the end of winter, there's going to be a real earthquake. All right. So first of all, you come up here and build house. You, uh, do we have more villagers? We do. Wait, can't I? Oh, it's once they've been upgraded, they can be assigned more bodies. Okay. Well, we're gonna we're gonna upgrade these buildings at some point. Uh, what we can do, though, is have... I do want more... Um, I do want more iron than we have currently. We're going to go ahead and hire ourselves a war chief. Uh, this button lets me select the whole war band. We're maybe going to have words with the, uh, with the dark elves here soon. Uh, okay. We will do more forging later. Right now, we don't have the iron to do anything else, so I don't even know... Okay, I don't even know about relics. Uh, but right now, we don't have the resources to, to do any more forging, so we're going to reassign this worker back to a villager. Actually, no, we're not. Oh, dear. Wolves. Whatever shall we do? Uh, it turns out there's a lot of wolves in this tile. We could just clear that, but if we don't intend to take it, obviously, there's a risk that clearing it will just open it up for another player. That said, more military experience is potentially valuable. Yeah, go do it. Now, as you might imagine, the War Chief's combat stats are phenomenal. So I'm going to try to have my normal warriors not do too much tanking. 
We don't see another player border adjacent to this region, so I think this is okay. All right, we keep getting strong. We leave our player, our military units right on the border of this other player. Hope that that's enough to dissuade them from messing with us. Uh, and I was going to assign two people to the dock. Do we have enough bodies? We actually only have one villager right now. I'm reluctant to send all of the villagers out because like, what if I need to build something? And I'm telling you right now, I need to build something. And what I need to build is, yes, a brewery. The Happiness Building. Uh, civilian, go do that. So you can see we're running out of happiness here. Population growth is slowing. And we are just going to need more bodies. Like, a lot more bodies. That's just true. Uh, also, we should absolutely build a sheepfold somewhere. Here, let's put a sheepfold up here. That'll be a thing that that villager can work on when they are done with this thing or when this I don't know what's going to happen first this building's got to finish pretty quickly ah okay another player is expanding into this area okay how bad is it so some of the buildings have caught fire due to the due to the quake and buildings that have caught fire obviously are not um, they're not workable okay so you're finished with that please go repair uh, I think only villagers can repair. Here, I'm going to reassign one of the healers for a moment. Just get this stuff done a little bit faster. Okay. You're going to go join the sailing expeditions. So, sailors loot crowns and lore or fame we get to pick. I'm having them get us extra lore right now. But yeah, they just go out on raids and... You know, that all that morally totally uncomplicated stuff. All right, so we're going to assign a couple of people to the brewery to the task of causing happiness. Is this what alcohol does? Not in my experience, but it's very common for video games to think so. All right, the warband. We don't have any healers right now, so I do want to be a little bit cautious. But I also would love the rewards of fighting these dark elves. And I'm a little worried that yellow may do it if we don't get to it pretty soon. So, let's consider. Uh, do we, we do have a villager. Someone was produced. Go and work on that sheepfold, would you? No, unfortunately, there's Draugr between us and the thing. And probably it would be best for us to claim this tile. We are operating at a little bit of a food deficit right now, which is maybe something I should be uh, more wary of. Can I do anything about that right this second? Not really. Uh, let's pick up Weaponsmith. I think we're going to want... Oh. <clears throat> Stopped paying attention and very nearly paid the price. Hey, you. Uh, go, go do some healing. Become a healer. Okay, the sheepfold is complete. So we can put a couple of sheep in the sheepfold. Uh, and they will help to produce food. Also, the wood consumption effect of enclosed sheep, the ones that are in the sheepfold, is active all year long. So that helps. We are slightly positive on food now. Unfortunately, yeah, we've really opened this up. But we can very easily kill this other player's units. And we've just made ourselves an enemy. <laughs> and we're going to decolonize this tile. You're not allowed to own this. You know, real-time strategy stuff. Sometimes it's a war. Uh, it takes quite a while to decolonize a tile. Uh, I think what I'm going to do here is you need to stay in so that it's still decolonizing. I'm going to send the war chief back over. I believe war chief is always first healing priority. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pull our other villager. Yeah, we just got a new spawn. I want another healer. Okay. War Chief benefits from forged weapons, and we're totally going to do some of that. Oh, also, we finished mining. 
So let's burn this and return these two to villager mode. We'll do something else with them later. Actually, no, you know what? One of you is becoming a blacksmith because we're probably going to do some smithing here. So as you can see, our military um, experience continues to funnel into the line that we chose until such time as it is complete. Prevent them from taking this over. I'm going to let my unit here heal up. Who is who is idle? Oh, yes, of course. Let's forge some weapons. Warriors gain the charge ability. And it runs faster when the engaged target is close enough and applies breached armor. Hell yeah. And our war chief will get that as well. Seems like a great move. Now we killed the end we killed Yellow's war chief when we first attacked or when we first stepped into that tile. Their war chief will be available again, but it's gonna be a minute. Alright, so we're just gonna we're just gonna do some damage here. And then retreat to our territory. Once Yellow's War Chief is reasonably likely to be back alive, we're going to have to start uh, being careful. We'll worry about that then. All right. I think we're going to need some stone here. We're going to really benefit from having some stone because we already have a benefit to upgraded buildings. I would like to start taking advantage of it. We are also getting pretty close to needing more houses. This tile already... This tile still has a building slot, so we'll... We'll do a house over here. You go work on that. Okay. So we haven't really talked about victory yet. How do you actually win a game of Northgard? Well, as you saw on the um, on the main menu, there are a lot of victory conditions available. You can just kill everybody, of course. It's a strategy game. You can do a strategy. Uh, there are also other victory conditions, though, in a way that feels very 4 x to me. Uh, so... If you can get enough total zones controlled and enough fame gained, you can build an altar of kings and win the game through fame. You can also win the game by building a lighthouse at one of your longship docks and accumulating enough total commercial influence. You can also just do a lot of science. If you uh, research enough lore, you gain access to these blessings. You can see when we pick up our next knowledge, we'll get to pick one of the blessings of the gods. If you get all four of them, you win a science victory. And finally, each map generates with a special map tile that can win the game in some way. Uh, they're all different. Yggdrasil is very straightforward. Find the legendary world tree, be the first to conquer it, and then you have to hold on to it for a certain amount of time, so obviously other players can be disruptive. Um, we're not really heading toward anything in particular right now. I'm just trying to like get generally strong. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, if I wanted to build a lighthouse and start accumulating... Okay. Requires shipbuilding, which is... Ah. Unlocks the lighthouse and makes your sailors more good. Sure, that makes sense. Oh. Territory is under attack. Where am I under attack? Over here. Kobolds. The kobolds just ran over because the tile was empty. All right, look, I'm not interested in doing battle with you, really. I'd rather be friends. But if you're going to be like this, kobolds do not have a lot of HP, as you can see here. All right. Okay, we have recapped the area. Now let's get back over to this border where we actually need to be for defensive purposes. Uh, a thing we could do, since we actually have a fair amount of wood, uh, we could build a defensive tower here to try to ward off that kind of nonsense. Uh, just give me any villager to this zone. We met the blue player. Okay. Also, an ominous shade prowls under the sea. Do I need to pull my ships back? I don't know. Whatever. Let's grab amenities. And what do we want now? Okay, this is this is just win the game. Uh, so immediately, 15 stone and 10 iron. Three happiness. I think I'm just going to take the three happiness, probably. Uh, reduces the loss of food production during winter and wood consumption. Uh, yeah, let's take the happiness. 
We'll just gain more population, right? All right, and the sheep are doing their thing, and yeah, all is good. All is good. So, how are we doing food-wise? There are dwarves nearby, and they will be upset if I colonize a zone adjacent to them. Interesting. I did not know that that was how that worked. Okay, uh, you finished what you were doing. I do want more upgrades. So what are relics? Hold on, we're going to pause the game and mouse over these. Mjolnir allows us to summon a thunderstorm on a zone. So they're all, they're all quite expensive. Bonus, for def bonus defense for units in the zone. You can summon new villagers for a food cost, depending on population. You gain crowns bonus depending on your commercial influence. Your lighthouse has a fourth great trade route. Okay, interesting. So that really helps with the, uh, the trade victory. You gain a lore bonus depending on the number of zones in your territory. You can colonize zones by spending lore. That's pretty cool. And right now, we're basically keeping up with the lore output of the player who is doing the best, right? Because we got, we got a notification that somebody else had earned a blessing, and we earned our blessing at the same time. So if we did want to just push, maybe we could try to make a lore victory happen. Uh, also, each clan has a specific relic for their clan. 20% more production through feast, 40% cost reduction, and an additional sheepfold. Right now, we're allowed to build one more sheepfold, I think. Three. Currently, we're allowed to build three. Oh, right, because our fame bonus... Our fame bonus gave us an extra one, right? Let's take a moment to look at some of these other things, too. So, okay, we're at war with the Dark Elves. That's true and going to continue to be true. So these are all of the other players. We don't really know too much about them. We haven't actually met Yellow, despite... Oh, no, sorry, this is Yellow. I was looking at their thing and thinking it was orange, but, like, that's not the goat. That's definitely not us. So, yeah, Ye Yellow's mad at us. The Clan of the Lynx, we don't know anything about. And we don't really have information on Yellow either. I assume as our, um, as our scouting of them improved, we would uh, eventually get there. Our scout did die at some point, and I did not bother to um, to make a new one. So I feel like we know enough about the territory around us for the moment. Okay, Jarek has the best relationship with the kobolds right now. That makes sense. They started right next to him. So, if we can get our relationship up a little bit. Dwarves are peaceful, no longer attack. Colonizing zones will still damage the relation. If we manage to get them up to over 30 they would start giving us stuff okay they only they only are cool with you building next to them if you're fully allied which requires you to get to a hundred but you gain 50 fame and dwarves dispatch two of their most expert craftsmen to help you mine and forge i mean that seems pretty good we could make friends with these dwarves Uh, they won't attack... The, the kobolds won't attack us anymore if we run trade with them. If we become a trading partner... Interesting. They have, they have a pool of five crowns per tick that they divide over all of their allies. Huh. Alright. So, making friends. It's a thing that we should perhaps consider. In order to do so, like I said, we're going to need to build a trading post... Which is one of these buildings. Trade. Yeah, it's probably under the trade thing, huh? It's probably in the heading that says trade. Well, we've got some room right there. He'll start work on that presently. All right. Who's idle? You're idle. Because I keep completing stuff. Uh, it would probably be a good idea for us to improve our woodcutter's tools. And in fact, maybe to even set up more woodcutters. You know what? Stop, stop, stop. I'm going to let them colonize this, and then I'm going to... So they, they actually pay the cost. And then I'm going to decolonize it from them. Because that seems like the funny way to do this. Also, seems like a fine time for a feast. We're actually kind of kicking ass right now. Uh, okay, I need a couple of villagers to come over here and start mining some stones so that we can do some building upgrades. This is absolutely the meanest way to have gone about this. Oh, you can see they're running their war chief over. Put my own war chief in front. All right, so we have we have charge. Hopefully, we'll get to break their armor down a little bit. 
We should take him apart pretty quickly. Although, they are the clan that has the special super aggressive warlord. You can see their guy has two weapons instead of a weapon and a shield. Different clans have, some different clans have different warlords that are, you know, or war chiefs rather, that are good at different things. Okay. We'll just heal up really quickly on that. And as the stone comes in, we can start upgrading our buildings. So the first building you have to upgrade is your town hall. It does increase your population cap. It also increases your population growth speed. So it's definitely worth doing. Uh, is that trading post finished? It is. Okay. We could really use some trade. Oh, it's just a... It was just a yellow unit that was moving across the zone very quickly. Or no, it's not even... It's a dwarf. Okay. I don't care about the dwarf so much. Uh, during the winter... Yeah, okay. Outside your territory, your military units have reduced power during the winter, so we're not actually going to go fighting. Uh, you finished what you were doing. We have enough iron to make one more set of tools. I'm going to increase the effectiveness of... Where are my traders? Uh, the lore master is a pretty good idea, too. We're going to do merchants. Do I only have one? Did I not assign a second person to merch? Go forth and do a merch. Okay, the Kraken is attacking yellow. That's very good for us. So, we have resources. We're allowed to trade some of our um, some of our stockpile for uh, money to other players. Obviously, I'd prefer to trade food or wood since that stuff's infinite. Right now, we're kind of at a loss, but we'll be fine once summer starts again on the wood front. So I think I'm cool trading wood. So we'll run wood to the dwarves. This is their favorite resource, so we will get more stuff from them. And in exchange, they will actually, they'll give us food and money. Oh, here we go. Okay. So, no, sorry, I'm, I'm reading that wrong. Minus two, because we couldn't change what was selected during the pause. So it was my, what we were seeing there was it would be minus two food for us plus 0.6 food for them. All right, this is going to be a little, it's a little expensive, but I do think we need to run the trade route. Another thing we probably need to do is um, actually build another... And we're going to do this as soon as we can. Uh, yes, confirm. Please upgrade. Look at that. We really improved that roof. Uh, now that we've improved that, we can start improving other things. Improving buildings always costs a bunch of stone. So we will improve our, uh, our woodcutters thing here and... Doing so will both allow increase the effectiveness of people assigned to that um, that building and also improve the number of people that can be assigned to the building by one. And obviously we want to pursue upgrades on our um, hunter's huts and stuff as well. <coughs> Pardon me. That's a little bit more eventual. So the dock got attacked, and I think it actually killed both of our sailors, it seems like, which is not ideal for me. Okay, summer again. We are we are back at positive wood output, and it's going to be even better. And now that our uh, combat stats aren't all murdered, let's go fight some dark elves. There sure are a lot of them. I think we are definitely, like, picking at them one by one while running people back here. Oh no, I've soured relations with the Dark Elves who already hated me and wanted to steal all my stuff. Alright, the merchant's tools have been improved and we are now out of iron, so you can just go back to doing something else. We just met green. Not my most primary concern at the moment. How much more stone is here? Okay, so we'll get a couple more building upgrades. There's no stone in the rewards for taking out the dark elves, but we'll get we'll get something out of it. Uh, can I keep track of 
I guess the diplomacy window is the only place to really do this. We've generated two whole points of, uh, of approval. So, what are we taking now? Let's take a moment to think about this. No longer have reduced power during the winter. Military units gain bonus attack from having a diverse military, which is probably a good idea. <coughs> Three happiness if you have a war chief. Yeah, feeling safe seems very important. So I'd really like to take one of these two. We already have the one tower up and I'm sure I'm going to build more. Let's, let's take defensive strategy. We get our next blessing in two more knowledges. Okay, all of this stuff is running as best it can. Let's go ahead and upgrade. And then assign a third woodcutter to it. And the next set of upgrades are definitely going on the hunter buildings. Let's just decolonize this real fast. And then we're gonna we're gonna go fight, of course. I do want to get this dark elf thing clear. Oh weird. It's a wolf. A white wolf. Well, they're the clan of the wolf, right? So I'm sure that's that's related to their bonuses somehow. I don't actually know how their clan works. Even when winter has just ended, the thing is like, hey, you should prepare for winter. And it's not wrong. Uh, so do we have... Right now, we don't have a lot of building space left. We should, we should definitely sheepfold. Uh, it does not appear that I am actually under attack. I think that was an error. Uh, apparently there is a single wolf. Okay. Let's keep working on these dark elves. Try to kill like one of them each time we show up. We're, we're lowering their numbers enough that they're getting um, they're getting slower at killing my units. At some point, we will be able to fight more than one of them at a time. All right. The good news is we have... Oh, no. Run. Ah. So many kobolds. They actually do attack. They, they attack really quickly. All right, all three of the villagers. Yeah, all three of the villagers should get up here. We're going to have two of them become merchants, and one of them is just going to repair this damaged tower before it burns down. Okay. There we go, because we still need money income. All right, so we have just enough stone to upgrade one more building. Let's make it this one. One of the stone miners becomes a hunter, and we can blow up the quarry and reclaim a little bit of the resources we used to build it. Now, we do have another... We have an iron mine. We don't actually have more stone, do we? Uh, do we even see another source of stone? Stone's hard to come by. You can, um, you can trade for it, potentially. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little bit of a bummer. All right, let's, um, I want to build another longship dock, I think. Which is, which, which one of these? There we go. 80. Okay. Because we have another tile that has coastline, so we should probably take advantage of it. Okay, so sheepfold, let us put this sheep in and one of the two sheeps that's in this territory. And we are producing additional sheep now that we have our sheepfold and our upgrades. So I guess I should probably be 
slaughtering for feasts, right? But I want to leave at least one sheep in every region. Finish off the wounded one first. And I think this is it. I think they're doomed now. So I was trying to make I was trying to spread them out so I could see the individual health bars a little bit more. So that I could avoid a thing like that from happening. Okay. 50 fame. Ooh, that person built an altar of kings. That is a pretty obvious declaration of an intent to a victory condition. And the altar of kings does give you resources. That's not like the um, the victory is not the only reason to build it, but it's significant for sure. Okay, so uh, one way that we can obviously get more stone and stuff is by trading with these dwarves. Blue has annoyed the dwarves to some extent. Also, there's some serious combat going on over here. Uh, oh, there's a... There is a big stone deposit there. That's 35 stone. I'm doing it. This isn't just about the dwarves. It's also about yellow and... Yeah, I think this is worthwhile. That is a big stone deposit. I'm sorry. We'll make it up to you. All right, somebody get over here and repair. Did that disrupt our trade route? No, okay, the trade route, the trade route continues. I am five fame away from getting our 500 fame upgrade being declared a Jarl of my own territory. Uh, we're also going to want a defense tower here. Huh. The Dark Elves will be requesting a levy. What does that mean? Oh, the event has been canceled. Oh, okay. There was some kind of event that was reliant on the Dark Elves that I was not paying attention to. And it didn't happen because of all the murdering I did. Okay, we're definitely taking feeling safe. More population growth. Uh, one free feast per year, and your units regenerate health while feasting. Well, it's November, so I'm going to go ahead and press the feast button for this year right now. All right, more building upgrades is more good. And we have our military units here, so if, if Yellow wants to get aggressive, we are prepared. The defensive tower obviously will also be tremendously helpful in this regard. So we're at 15 uh, lore now, because we have both of our both of our docks doing lore raids. Now we have a lot of border with blue. It doesn't necessarily have to be a big deal. And in fact, what I might do is let's build another trading post. And we'll run a, we'll run some trade routes with blue and try to make friends. Uh, okay, let's talk about this rivalry thing. What's going on here? So you need to reveal an enemy's town hall to establish a rivalry. So that involves advanced scouting. And then once you establish someone as your rival, for each population you have more than your rival, the arrival speed of both its villagers and yours increases. For any knowledge your rivals discovered and you did not, your population produces more lore. For each 50 fame you have more than your rival, your units get defense against them, but your rival gains fame when killing your units. Oh, this is really interesting. A way to sort of like link your progress to somebody else in a way where you don't exactly want them to fail. It's better to have a rival who's doing well. Sort of. I guess the, the bullying is a little bit different. But th yeah, these are really interesting. We are not playing with this mechanic at all right now, and we totally could be. I'd have to upgrade the um, the scout building, which I'm not sure if I want to do. Passively improves relationship with neutral factions in adjacent zones. Oh, hold on. How do I do that? We can do that. I'm going I'm to do that. I have another villager who's free. Get over here and we'll use five of our stone because this, this 
uh, thing had 35 stone in it. So that's three building upgrades plus this. I am going to out relationship you with these dwarves. It's going to happen. Uh, you are just becoming a merchant. I should probably also mine the, um, the iron deposit that we have. It's 20 iron. It's not bad. So I wonder if you have to, it says passively. I'm assuming I just, I don't have to like do anything. I guess I could have thrown this down and like, we were in position to gain relationship with both of them, but I wanted the quick payout. If I built an offering well, no, the, the dwarves and the kobolds are too far apart. Never mind. All right. You are also a merchant. Establish a trade route. Um, wood, I guess. Establish it with blue, with Jarek. We're gonna try to we're gonna try to make friends. So I don't think we actually get any benefit out of doing that. Yeah, Jarek was the one I wanted. Um, but I know I know that it makes them less likely to attack us. Their AI gets friendlier. Okay, looks like Yellow's not eager to get too aggressive with us. Oh. Hey, we found Yggdrasil. Uh, maybe I should decolonize this region from yellow then. Are we are, we're already at building cap here, right? But once the stone's out, we can we can destroy the mine. Also, you can develop a zone to increase the number of buildings it can contain. I'm going to develop this zone with military intent. Let's make a camp of axe throwers here. All right, welcome to, it's not winter anymore. I'm just gonna, we're gonna do battle. So we almost lost that warrior very quickly. I didn't get him out in time. No, the wolf, focus on the wolf. They have actual military units coming over. Right now we're decolonizing their region, but they may they may push us. Um, and if they try to pursue us back across the border because we're injured, we have our defensive tower to fall back on. All right, do it. Okay. Uh, congratulations, you've just been upgraded to Axe Thrower. <laughs> so, this increases the maximum size of our warband and also gives us a second kind of unit to be. Uh, I don't really think we do need two healers anymore. We're not taking damage all that frequently. I'm going to convert one of them into an Axe Thrower. So Axe Throwers are just ranged units like you would expect. I would love to get another warrior as well. How close are we to producing another? Mm. All right, go ahead and train up. We have a lot of money. Not necessarily doing so hot on food. Uh, I do have the stone necessary to upgrade to the other hunter's lodge. As we bring in more villagers, we'll assign them to this because this lodge still has this lodge has three people working at it. So it still has one extra slot, actually. And then we can uh, put two people in there as well. Okay. My warband is a little bit more impressive now. I want this territory. I'm going to take this away from yellow because I want to be adjacent to the world tree. Okay, well, that was ill-advised. I don't know what the right number of military units to attack me with was, but I know it's not that. Okay, how are we doing on sheep? We produced a lot of bonus sheep. Here's one. How about over here? Oh, 
okay, so the free feast, it's not like one feast each calendar year. It's you get a free feast, and then one year later, you get another free feast. Okay. Oh, this is going to piss off the dwarves again. We're trading with them. It'll get okay. I, this, taking this is pretty important, I think. All right, their war chief did a lot of damage to me, way more than I was expecting. Sorry, dwarves. Uh, diplomacy window, neutrals. I mean, we're pretty positive, though. Okay, that was enough to drop us back behind the Lynx player, but whatever, it's fine. All right, y'all can hang out all together here now, now that this is mine. Uh, I do not have a villager. Okay, so we're going to need a villager. Uh, War Chief's attack and defense up incre increases your military unit's attack by 10% against Dragonkin and 30% against other mystical creatures. I'm actually going to take Monster Slayer, I think. And also, Jord's Blessing, or maybe Yord's Blessing. Because uh, we're about to be in a position where we could fight some fallen Valkyries. Uh, but I also need... I just need a villager. I need somebody to become a villager. Yeah, I don't know who I want to do it, though. Everybody's doing really important work. Because, like, we could rescue these buildings. Sorry, hold on. Just a second. There is... Something in my eye. Okay. I guess we could we could pull a woodcutter just for a moment. Alright, turn back into a villager. Run up here. Actually, the very first thing I'm going to do is build a defense tower. So yeah, get up here and build this, and then we'll figure out other stuff afterward. Oh, green is making a play for this thing. It would be 1,500 food to colonize that. Good to know. Does Green have two war chiefs? Oh, they have a war chief and a Valkyrie. Oh, I forgot about my bodyguard thing. How does the... Bo Hold on. What was the deal with that? Uh, this is the one. Your war chief can recruit a bodyguard to protect your war chief at a military building. Huh, but how though? Is it like... Uh, not a good time. Oh wow, blue is just fully, blue is in full assault mode. Also, they seem to have, uh, seem to have recruited a bear of some kind, and yeah, this is bad. Jesus. Okay, cool. Maybe not the right moment. Wow, okay, blue is like, blue is incredibly militarily powerful and not at all swayed by my trade routes. Uh, you two, go become villagers for a second while I figure out what to do with you. So yeah, okay, they destroyed my defensive building, they killed my entire army... Uh, you also can just go and become a... Well, I, you need to become a military unit, actually. <laughs> Alright, so they took a zone from us. Am I going to lose? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I think that was fairly likely. Uh, let's try to gather up a little bit of a warband here. So we're, we're going a little a little bit heavier on the axes this time. If I upgrade this, 
All right, so if I, like, how do I recruit a bodyguard? There's a button. On the, it's an ability on the war chief, not at the building. Okay. Okay, that seems useful. For all the good it's gonna do, I am gonna put up another, uh, another tower here. Oh, wait, this isn't, sorry, this is the other blue player. Yeah, there's a dark blue and a, okay. That, that actually makes me feel a lot better because now I don't think that, uh, I don't think that the Lynx player has an army like twice the size of anything I've ever seen. It was two different players' armies that we're seeing. Still deeply terrifying. All right, so what's up? We're getting a really, really ugly feast. Okay, they've got a giant. So apparently there's a faction of giants somewhere on the map and they are, they have picked a side. Um, I guess disengage. I mean, there's actually nothing I can do about that, right? Yeah, we're not going to be able to take that back. Okay, well. So the dwarves got murdered. I'm going to take my free feast now before winter starts. They actually hit the food cap there for a moment. And we are apparently staying at the food cap. Okay, well, I'm building a silo to raise our food cap. So we just colonize this region. That keeps us in play for the tree, at least. Uh, but it turns out our military is not strong enough to fight any other player's military. Okay, a little bit of combat going on between the two different bluish players. Uh, they would not... I don't want to cross... Okay, let me let me go this way. I don't want to cross this border to fight this player. Right? I, I think that they will interpret that negatively. Okay, bad food is bad. Jeez. Wait, this is Jarek. Halstein's the one I wanna I wanna mess with. How are my relations with Jarek? Out of curiosity? I know I just Okay. It doesn't look like there's any progress of any kind. Right, here come their actual military units. But we gotta we gotta pick on them when we can, right? Bear spirit. Huh. I don't know whose units those were trying to run through that area. I'm hoping that one of these players will be friends with us. Ooh, wow, okay, we have a serious wood problem. And... Uh, also other problems. Yeah, this, like, really long, really harsh winter. Bad news. So, since we're out of wood, units are getting sick. Uh, you can see over here we have 12 people who are ill. And... It is difficult to overcome sickness once it, once it sort of starts to occur. We're gonna get a second healer going. This is going to be really bad for us, though. We're going to lose a lot of people. Okay. The blizzard has ended. Then the winter has ended. And our healers are going to do their level best, and they're going to be wholly unable to solve the problem, and a lot of our people are going to die. But, you know, once we're below our population cap significantly, at least we'll get new people in pretty quickly. 
We have lots of resources to do upgrades with, but the all, all upgrades also cost wood. Okay, bee hunters. Slaughter our additional sheep. I'm a little leery of building a uh, building a third sheepfold very far forward at all, for obvious reasons. Uh, so the sicknesses will just end naturally, uh, I believe. Also, a unit that gets healed to full will get um, will have its sickness removed automatically. So healing really is a good way to clear up uh, that problem. It's just, you know, you have to actually have enough healing to overcome the damage the sickness is dealing, which is not necessarily uh, the freest thing in the world. Okay, what are we going to take now? The next winter is not going to be nearly so bad. Military units gain. All right, I'm going to take military strategy. Two more, two more knowledges to the next bonus. Ah, the bodyguard gets their own category on the thing. Okay. Our happiness is only 0.4 because our clan wants better houses. Uh, once we start getting upgrades, people get people get too snooty for the normal houses. Well, I'll go ahead and do some house upgrades. Upgraded houses have more room in them as well. So we get a little bit. Okay, we have too many wounded. I'm working on it, y'all. I'm really I'm doing everything in my power. Uh, as soon as we hit 100 wood, we're upgrading the healer's hut and assigning a third healer. That's going to dramatically increase the rate, but yeah, it's looking a little rough right now. I'll try to keep my military in a place where I can defend myself if we get attacked. Uh, we could do food trades. Let's trade food to Jarek. And we lost the other trade thing, so okay. I'm still trying to make friends with Jarek. I did step over the line because I was not clear which blue player was which. But hopefully they will be cool. All right, just don't even let them beat on the tower with all of their units simultaneously. A civilian to come over here and... Uh, all right, well, they did focus on the tower first. Which means that we got to kill a lot of their units. The war chief, not the giant. Come on. Uh. Just hit him like twice. Okay. Uh, that sucks. Uh, feast. Yeah. More happiness, more doing everything. Build things faster. Additional healer. Okay. I mean, the giant's not literally invincible, right? We did some good damage there. But it's going to take us some time now to rebuild the... Uh, to rebuild the area. We're going to establish a new axe thrower camp in this region by upgrading it. Okay, we'll get a free feast over there. All right, we still have 17 wounded, so <laughs> the healers are working overtime. Brynhild's at 800 fame. Uh, taking stuff from your enemies, I believe, is worth fame. I believe we are we are increasing the amount of fame that this jerk has. Now he's run his giant away. I'm going to try to decap this area and see if he brings the giant back immediately. Yeah, you want to you want to fight with me with villagers? That's worth some military experience, apparently. Okay, do we still have... Yes, we do still have four sailors.
I don't know why they would bring a single axe thrower over here. They're just buying time, I guess, because as long as they're contesting the region, the timer's not ticking. As when I get this back, we can um, we can burn this thing. Get a little bit of our resources back. I'm honestly, like, I really don't want to pull people off of any other tasks. Green is at a thousand fame already. We might lose to that, honestly. Oh, this is ugly. Yeah, all right, disengage. The good news is we heal very quickly. Another axe thrower. They are actually healing that giant faster than we are healing our warlord. I wonder how many healers they have. Okay. They want to bring that giant back. We will fight the giant again. I would really love to decolonize this region from them, though. Okay, have food so have food silos and have healers. We already have a silo up, and I think you only have to have one to protect against this event. But we could have more than one if we needed to. All right, I'm gonna run my. War Chief back across the border here to this area where there is a military camp so that I can grab a bodyguard and also a little bit of healing. What's the next feast cost? 760. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and do the colonize. I was definitely considering just holding off. And we'll put up the tower. It helps a little bit. Repair this before the axe thrower camp, I think. It would have been nice to save them both. But if I can't... Since we have an axe thrower camp down, you know. If I'm gonna build, if I'm gonna have a military building here, we should make it the other one. Uh, there's my free feast. I'm gonna go ahead and use it right now. In theory, it's probably better to feast when it's, you know, not winter, but. All right, so we have a lot of happiness. We're still bringing people in. We're getting some good feast time in before winter and it helps us prepare for the resource loss of winter. And I'm hoping our one silo and our three healers are enough to protect us against the um, negative outcomes of the rat infestation. Oh, apparently I, I can't even get to the amount of food we would need to um, to take over the world tree. Ah, you can only build silos in a place that has a food resource. Okay, well it's not like we are uh, low on. It's not like we're low on crowns, so I don't feel too bad about that. Um, having built the extra, or having taken the extra upgrade. And I think I'm going to go ahead and, I mean, we may as well organize a feast because we're just losing food income by not having enough food. We could just build a shield bearer camp back here. I'm going to do that. More warband. And then as this stuff is getting finished, we can... Um, we can turn some of these extra villagers into uh, military units. Okay, people are doing stuff. There's rats everywhere. But yeah, we're not being we're not being too affected. Okay, four of our members are sick. We have a ton of healers. 
Are the rats adorable? Um, yes, they are. Okay, good. That's good video games right there. You want your rats to be adorable. Uh, so, I am going to... I'm going to have both of you turn into shield bearers. And then both of the shield bearers get over here. Okay, the healers are hopefully... And they're working as hard as they can. Can y'all maybe, um... Yeah, focus on, focus on healing the badly damaged military unit. Okay. And then the next time we get a villager in... Uh, oh, my happiness is... Oh, right, my happiness was screwed up because of the disease. Uh, actually, what we probably want to do is upgrade this building. The next time we get a villager in, they become a brewer, and then the villager after that can become a, um... But you know what? You can just go be a brewer right now. The villager after... The next villager can become the final unit in the war, war band then. That'll speed that up a bit. What was the... It was 12? No, it's 1,500. What is my food cap right now? 11. So I need another region with a natural food resource, which I actually don't have, right? Yeah, that's, um, that's a problem. I literally can't have enough food. There's no sheep in these regions over here, but I'd be pretty leery of introducing one. Give me another axe thrower. Lore's going okay. So mining efficiency is not, like, super great, but it's on the way to stuff that is still useful to us. Okay. Ooh, Jarek is outpacing us on lore. By a fair amount, in fact. Uh, so healers will gather food when they are not healing. I'm going to have you become... Yeah, can we upgrade the sailors, please? Maybe we can still make this happen. So we'd be able to build another silo if we took this area back. We haven't seen their giant in a while. Okay, you know what? Let's not attack the region that has the tower and the warlord. Let's maybe, we could just push this tower really hard. This is an upgraded tower though, you can tell by the roof. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'll try to do some damage here. Kill the villagers in the region as quickly as we can, and then fall back. Because now they've run all of their military units out, and we can go for this. Alright, and obviously as soon as the tower is down, all of the civilian units in the region are dead. All of their military units just got over here. Probably going to want to have everybody just fall back, but I'm going to keep this going as long as we can. All right, fall back. All right, the whole lot of us can definitely kill this war chief. Damn it. His selection box is so big, I was trying to select him and pull him back, and it, uh, it did not work. Uh, cycle me down to one. I need... Where did I put that? Oh yeah, it's right here. Oh, 
Okay. Let's try to make sure that the axe throwers are not tanking too much. Oh, we're gonna need more houses. They're actually running out of housing. So we'll colonize this. That's an altar of kings. I feel like we should decolonize that too as soon as we can. Right now they're just sending in pretty minor stuff against us. Uh, here, we'll blow this up while we have control of it. But I actually would love to, I would love to keep the farm if we can. And then let's build a silo. And I guess also a defense tower. You know, they help a little bit. All right, that stuff will get constructed as quickly as it can get constructed. Who is idle? Oh, sure, right. <laughs> I forgot. What's it cost to build a relic? More more iron than we have. Uh, just stop being a, a smith for the moment. Yeah, we are not winning on this. Once these two things are built, these people become farmers. These are pretty cheap to upgrade, but like stone is rare. I do feel like I should maybe, maybe upgrade other stuff. Let's be, yeah, let's maybe like upgrade the other silos. Does that, so this is, we're at 1400 right now. If I upgrade this silo, does it also increase the food cap? It does, okay. So that takes us up to 1600. So we could get to the point where we can colonize this region. And that has got to be our plan. No, not you. I did not mean that. All right, well, as many of you as can turn into axe throwers, go turn into axe throwers. Okay, tremors, tremors I'm not too worried about. Everybody get together. So we do have to hold this region, though, in order to be generating food. Our free feast. I mean, I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit the free feast button as soon as it becomes available. And keep in mind, taking this does not mean we win. Taking this means that we have to start defending ourselves against the players who will try to take it from us. But it's a thing. Also, we're actually about to. Um, we're actually about to max this out. Attack and move 30% faster for five seconds. Is that a like a button I will have to push on the warlord? Probably. Or the war chief, rather. Oh, there's fishing here too. I don't know that I necessarily want to um devote more bodies to this this zone that is likely to be a place of conflict. We're gaining food plenty fast. And I doubt anybody else has enough silos to... I mean, I, I don't know that. I'm hoping. I hear combat in the dark. I wonder if it's green and yellow fighting or if it's... It could be either of them fighting neutrals because there is gray territory there. We are not going to pay for a feast, but I will take a free one when one is offered. Should I build another military building? We have access to every kind of military unit at this point, but we could absolutely have more. Okay, so the, yeah, food, farmers produce a lot of food during the summer. Uh, we have sheep that we could slaughter, and we're about to have the we're about to have our free feast. And once that fires, we're gonna get 
Yggdrasil right after, and then things are going to get weird because it's going to be winter and we're going to be trying to do a lot of stuff all at once. I'm definitely leery. Okay, yeah, it's a button I press. All right, attack, 30% attack speed for five seconds. Feels pretty significant. Oh, the colonization is going to take 100 years. I was not prepared for that. Okay, well, I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. Somebody repair that. Somebody repair that. Somebody repair this. We are not going to get here in time. You know what? Fuck it. Well, y'all move real fast when you want to. Move real fast when you're moving away from my stuff. Ah, damn it. Oh, also green is here. Okay, fuck this. <laughs> well, okay, I don't get that. Uh, organize a normal feast. <laughs> Let's feast while we recover. Uh, yeah, the... This is a problem. The fact that uh, the fact that we can't do anything about Jarek, like there's no way to make Jarek not want to attack us. Uh, the the old trading partner strategy, not as effective as I would like, is pretty bad news. I think it does mean that there's probably no way we're gonna win. We lost a lot of housing when we lost that region. Okay. So we can build a couple of houses really quickly. And then I need... Uh, I need a couple more axe throwers, but also... All three of you become shield bearers. And then do I want, the question is, do I want a warrior? Yeah, you know what? I will throw in one warrior, I think. Because the warriors, the warriors have some value. They don't do the damage of the axe throwers. They don't survive as well as the shield bearers, but they have a nice mix of toughness and um, offense. And also critically important to remember, they apply the armor debuff. Yeah, I think we are, in fact, going to lose, because I did not play the game super tightly. This is on normal difficulty, too. Okay, so we maxed out our military. Definitely not enough to defend us against even a single other player, which sucks. Uh, we could take shipbuilding next, and pretty soon at that. We lost our, um, we lost our runestone. Mayhap we go get it back. You are definitely not allowed to build a defensive tower. Alright. You want to be at war? Fine. We'll be at war. Those are hunters? So not really necessarily the best military units. Yeah. Hmm. I think we're going to have such a hard time holding this with every other player's military being superior to ours, apparently. I'm not sure what my real plan is here. 
I do know I'm going to decolonize this. I don't know if I'm going to try to take it myself. Or just take it away from them. I think I'm just going to take it away from them. I'd like to get the runestone back, but I think at this point we're aware that we can't win a, um, a lore victory anyway. So we, we will not get there fast enough. So does that maybe change my shipbuilding move? Probably. <laughs> Sheep can make money with the wool trade. Trading food increases your trade route's crown's income. Hmm, interesting. I might just take legendary hero. It says heroes plural, but you know, it does only apply to one unit, so it feels like hero singular. It might behoove us to try to wear people down a little bit before. So we would need three more knowledges. I do not. I think we're probably pretty close to losing then, actually, if that's the case. Uh, let's have all the axe throwers step back a little bit. We're going to just knock this over. Oh, or... Okay, no, we're good. We're fine. <laughs> For a second there, I was afraid the game had crashed this late into the thing. All right, I'm taking this away from Brynhild. Brynhild has been nothing but a problem to us. While we reassemble the food to attempt the uh, the tree thing again. I wonder if they changed it. I don't remember it taking so long to colonize before. I wonder if the deal is now that you, you win immediately when it's colonized, but it takes so long that people have time to screw with you. Brynhild is at a thousand fame, and that's dangerous, but they can't win without their altar. 1,200, enough zones controlled, and the altar. Okay. So green's got enough victory to... Uh, green's got enough fame to win. My guess is they're probably short territory. Oh, wow. This has become a real situation. They have so many units. All right, the wounded people step back across the thing. Jesus. I mean, they really want their altar, right? That makes sense. Maybe I just steal their altar. That wasn't even a military unit. They just ran a like a random person over. Ah, uh, and this would give us a circle of stones that we could use for more lore. I think I just want to let everything burn, though. And now that we know yellow has no military units, we wait until our stuff is healed and we go. I need to re-shield bearer. Fallen sailors are approaching my coasts. Man, could they maybe like do that later? Where's the newly made? Okay, all of the shield bearers need to get in here. And then you fall back and finish getting healed. Okay. I don't know I don't know why I couldn't see them, but I couldn't see them. Okay. That's the fullest warband we can manage. So we know Yellow's army is is gone. Green is going to try to stop us, but we don't know what green can muster at the moment. It might not be very much. You know, so it's hard to guess, but it is entirely possible that green is um, depleted because we know green was fighting somebody. And presumably people are picking on green. I would be picking on green if I wasn't very busy because, like, they're in a position where they could theoretically win. 
Yellow moved a single military unit over the border. Interesting. Questionable. Right, you may as well go get your little bit of healing. Oh, here it comes. Okay. Uh, hmm. Fall back. Hold on a second. Let's not fight them on their terms. Wow. Axthor decided to move much slower than all of my other units uh, generally move. Okay. So Axthor's have to back up. Oh, this rules. What a moment. Still, though, they have like, what is this, like 20 units? There's actually actually no way to defeat a force of this size. How do they even manage this? How many of their building slots are fully devoted to uh, military structures? God, the Axtorists want to be in front so badly. I'm trying to like pick them off, but yeah, we're trading, which is bad for me. I need to I need to be winning because they have so many more units than I do. Ugh, frustrating. We can kill that one real fast. No, actually we can't. My units just don't like they get in the zone and they stop and just don't attack. Which is really frustrating, actually. Am I? None of my zones are flashing. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. The sailor thing. Green could have pushed us, and I was kind of wondering if they would. But, alright, that's fine. Kill these real fast. May as well hit the free feast. Oh, right. We have a billion food. Uh, well, it's about to be winter. Okay, Fisk is able to rivalry with us, which is interesting. That means that they have scouted our town hall. Oh, and we're actually out of money. Okay, uh, we are lower fame than every other player. We're not lower fame than Halstein, but also I don't need to fight Halstein. Um, how is the, how expensive is the scout camp upgrade? Not very. We're out of stone for the moment, but I might be able to do something about that. So if we build a marketplace somewhere, do I have a zone where I can still develop? Here we go. We can get money this way. Uh, we can afford to trade off food to Jarek, I guess, or like we're getting absolutely nothing out of the um Absolutely nothing out of food that we're gaining right now. And I don't want to try to start the colonization process until we are back at proper military size. So we don't need to put people to work in the marketplace. Although actually I will move the traders from here to there. Uh, but we can use this building to just trade resources for crowns or vice versa. And obviously we could sell an awful lot of food safely. So how are we ever going to deal with green? It seems like green should be winning the game, right? Your green should have won by now with an army like that. I don't I don't understand how they wouldn't. Uh, no, I don't want to buy food. Okay, you can't sell stuff. You can only buy stuff. I was not remembering that correctly. The only way to sell stuff is via trading post. Okay, well. We're going to need more money.
Because, like, obviously, buying stone would be great. It takes time for the resources to accumulate at the marketplace. So we can't just buy stone straight up. And it's going to be like a hundred something, right? Yeah. Probably probably in the neighborhood of 170, 180 crowns to train up the whole, uh, the whole group that we need. Well, we can put one person on it. Uh, sorry, that's the wrong building. Do this. Congratulations, you have narrowly survived to the new year and have no hope of winning the game right now. We're get I'm working on it, we're getting there. So we can we can fight another player who has a military that's like the same size as ours, it feels like. We do very poorly against green though. I don't know how we're gonna deal with that. We could try siphoning some of their stuff off. We could try knocking away some of their territories in, in the hopes that we just, like, we make it impossible for them to, um, to have a response to us. We should build a mine. There's some iron here. Uh, how many healers do I currently have working? Oh. Damn it. Well, that's our home region. We do need that. Two healers. Let's let's keep that. Let's make that still the case. Time for the war cry. Okay, lots of animal spirits too. Yep. Region just Oh no, Jarek won a wisdom victory while doing this. Yeah, so I'm a little rusty. I think that's clear. I am not doing the greatest, but that's what a game of, uh, of Northgard looks like. It's a lot to take on. I'm a little, you know, I tend to play a lot of turn-based games. Um, but I think this is really cool. There's a lot going on here. The sort of like discovery and ex exploration and exploitation of the island is f uh, really fun. And I could have played a heck of a lot tighter there, of course. Uh, so I'm going to call it right here for today. Thank you all so much for watching. That feels like <laughs> at least an episode's worth of footage. When you come back next time tomorrow, we're going to play another normal game with one of the fancy clan. I mean, it's Rat. We're going to play the Rat Clan. The Rat Clan's probably fun. I don't even care if they're fun. They're the Rat Clan. <laughs> so come back next time tomorrow for that. And we'll see you then.